Hi, my name is Homer Knox. I'm going to be teaching tonight at the Life Center in Bradenton, Florida. Gentlemen, what I've given you today is a copy of the Tabernacle Prayer. For those of you that were here when I taught on prayer, okay, this is one of the references I've used, the Tabernacle Prayer. It was produced by Pastor Cho under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. He's produced this. It's a wonderful tool. I use this. This is the first thing I use when I, after I do my prayer time in the morning, and just praising. I praise God for a half hour in the morning. I do a half hour. And then I get down on my knees and I do the half hour. And then I read through this. This is a preparation prayer. Prepare me to ask all these things I want. I want to help, you know, all, not just for me, other people. But I use this first. And it's based on the Old Testament temple. There's articles in the temple. There. So we're going to talk about the tabernacle prayer. We're going to talk about the articles in the temple, the brazen altar, the laver, the candlesticks, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense, and the holies of holy. Anybody familiar with the temple? You guys familiar with the temple at all? Okay, it's the process. When you go into the temple, the first thing you see is what? The altar. We see the altar because it's the blood. Can't do anything without Jesus, without that blood, claiming that blood, having that blood on you, you know. And so and then it goes uh, to labor. The priests, when they sacrifice the, auto, or the animals at the altar, then they cleanse themselves. It's a thing of water. So the blood's first. We've accepted Jesus. Now we got the blood. Now the next thing we do is a cleansing process. The candlesticks are the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to live successfully, okay? And that talks about Him. The table of showbread is the Word of God. you got to have the Word of God daily to survive. You can't survive without that. And then we have the altar of incense. That's praise and worship. We do some praise and worship in here. And finally, we have the holies of holy, and that is praying for our family, making our requests. And so that's the sequence of things. Any questions on that? Ezekiel 7. 37, 1 to 10. Ezekiel talks about prophesying. Speak to these bones. So speak to the bones, Ezekiel. Okay, there's other scriptures here. Let me see what we want to do here. We want to get promises that deal with us, and we want to make declaration on those promises. Right. And you can read through these scriptures. We're not going to do that now, because this will take a while to get by all this. Turn your page, gentlemen. The first piece of article is the brazen altar, the benefits of the blood. We talk about blood at church here a lot, don't we? Talk about it. And we're going to read through this. When you start this tabernacle prayer, you always start with Jesus. You say, dear Jesus. That's all important. That's all important that you do that. Okay. And all our prayer time should be, dear Jesus, dear Jesus. We don't want to forget that. We can start reading through this, and it just specifies what it's for. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to read this all together. Now here's what I've done. I've highlighted the things that are important. It's making declaration. It's telling God. Okay, it's telling the enemy. It's telling anybody that's around, this is where you are. Okay, and this is what you think. And so those things are important. There's one here I missed on the first line, but does you know, but it gives you an idea. And let me summarize. I worship you, I thank you, I worship you, I'm delivered. You have delivered me. I praise you. I declare. I'm redeemed. Okay, I'm completely delivered. I'm delivered again. I'm free. I have the blessings. I'm a blessed person. I'm delivered. I'm completely delivered. I am a member and I worship. Okay, all those are declaration things. Let's read as a group. We'll go down through. Let's do the first one. I worship your blood. I thank you because your blood forgave all my sins. you guys believe that? All your sins are forgiven? Anybody doesn't believe that here? Okay, all my sins. All the sins that I've committed, all the sins I'm going to commit in the future, you've forgiven me eternally. Let's talk about commit in the future. We're cleansed by the blood. We have Jesus' blood on us. Now look, there's churches out there, God bless them, but they think if you sin and you don't confess it, you're damned. You know, we don't think that way. Okay, I would say the majority of churches don't think that way. That blood cleanses everything. Now, here you go. If you start sinning and you know you're doing sin and you don't confess, you know, you know you're, you're, you're wrong here, you know, you need to get that squared away. You can jeopardize yourself. Here we go. We talked about the blood. Um, number two, Jesus, I worship you because through your blood you've delivered me from the power of Satan and the world. You understand about the power of the world? 
Talk about big cars, talk about beautiful women, talk about island retreats. That's the power of the world. And that can really suck you in. That can really suck you in. And so he's delivered you from that. Okay, You've moved me to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Now I'm living in your son's kingdom through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're living in Jesus' kingdom now. You're not living like the devil. You used to live like the devil. I used to live like the devil. I'm volunteering. But you're out of that now. You're out of that now. Okay. Number three. Jesus, Jesus. through the stripes you received at the courtyard at Pilate, my sicknesses and disease have been taken away since 2,000 years ago. I declare that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, that Christ's blood speaks better than the blood of Abraham. And so I praise you. I praise you for divine healing through the blood of Jesus Christ. Has anybody been healed here? You've been healed for anything? Anybody healed? I got a back healing 20 years ago. I have a degenerative back problem that my, my uh, backbone goes in instead of out. And it cuts off all these nerves down here. And I could do one aisle in giant supermarket. And then I'd have to go sit down. That was all. But I needed to walk a mile. I said, I got to go. Too much pain. And so then I go. And so we attended a little brother in Christ church. Maybe 25 people. And it says, call for the elders of the church. James chapter 5. Call for the elders. And so I called for my, my pastor, my one elder. And they prayed for me. And so I went up in pain. I went back in pain. Okay. And I had pain. And so about a year later, I was sitting in church, and ga boom, ga bong, it's gone. And it hasn't bothered me since. Now, what I do notice is that if I don't start praising God for that and occasionally, I get twinge. You get a little twinge here. You know what I mean? Get a little twinge. And so. Uh, that healing thing, that's really big time. I got some health, I got a health thing now rolling, okay? It's not going to kill me, but it's affecting me a little bit. And so what I've done is I've taken a sheet of paper, and every now and then I start listing a healing scripture. A list of healing scripture. And when I'm in prayer time, I start reading it back to them. It says he healed everybody. He touched them and they were healed. You know, call for the elders of the church. I should read back to God. Man, that's real powerful. That's real powerful. And so... Healing's a big deal, and it's available. Where are it, those scriptures? What's that? Where are those scriptures? James 5. James 5, call for the elders of the church. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's difficult to understand how you pray for people and they're not healed. I pray for people all the time. You know, First of all, I don't ask, because it's none of my business whether God heals them or not. Just lay your hands on them and pray for them. And you have an opportunity to do that when you seek sick people. People tell me they're sick. I just lay my hands on them. I don't even ask them. You know, can I pray for you? I just boom. I just pray for you. And uh, I don't ask. So you don't know whether they're healed or not. And some people you pray for, they're terminal, and they die. And you can't figure out. You know, I look at the scriptures and say, well, why is that happening? Well, there's a time for us to go. You know, it's a time for us to leave. And so that gets, that gets in there. But if I have an opportunity and you're sick, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. All right, down here. Uh, so through your blood, I'm completely delivered from the curse. I am delivered from failure and poverty. I am free from the curse. I have the blessings of Abraham. I am a blessed person. I'm delivered from the curse. You understand about the curse? Adam cursed us all because he sinned. And so we get his curse. And so you've got to be broken from that, and that's what the blood does. It releases us from the Adamic curse. All right? Are you free from the curse? You have the blessings of Abraham. Do you understand about the blessings of Abraham? Let me give it to you. Richest man in the world. That's what he was. Matter of fact, nations would come to him and say, Go away, you're too strong for us. Okay? He was the biggest guy out there. And we have his blessings. Now, we're not the richest men in the world, but we have the blessings of Abraham. All right. The last one. Dear Jesus, through your blood I'm delivered from death and hell. Jesus, you died. You were resurrected. You conquered death and hell. You brought the glory of the kingdom of heaven. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I am completely delivered from death and hell and now living in the glory of Jesus Christ. I am a member of the kingdom of God. I have the eternal kingdom in me. So praise God because of the blood. I worship Jesus and praise him because of the blood. Okay, those are the benefits of the blood. Now let me tell you how I use this. I read this through. 
And then I go back and just start thanking him for each one of them. Okay, I do like this. I say, Jesus, thank you that your blood forgave all my sins. Thank you that you delivered me from the power of Satan in the world. Thank you that you healed all my diseases. Thank you that you redeemed me. Thank you that you delivered me. Thank you that you've given me the blessings of Abraham. And thank you that I'm delivered from death and hell. Praise God. The blood is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. All right. Questions on that? Is this worthwhile, this part there, the blood? Yeah. Did you realize what the blood did? When you take communion here, think about these things, because that's what's happening. You know, you're just, you're just uh, declaring that. How'd you like to be the enemy? You get up with this guy, you know, he's up, he's watching, there you are, and you're declaring all this stuff. Holy moly, you'd be depressed, wouldn't you? All right. The laver. Laver is a big thing of water, and they had it up on a stand. And when they slaughtered the animals, they got blood all over themselves. And so that has to be cleaned off. And so that's what they use the labor for. For us, it's the Holy Spirit asking forgiveness. We ask forgiveness, and he cleanses us. Let's start at the beginning here. Oh God, make me righteous through your grace. Heavenly Father, make me truthful. Please help me not live in lies. Let me not tell lies. Let me be a truthful person before you and before other people. Before I got saved, I used to lie. And I used to lie, you know. I wasn't a great liar, but I was a liar. And that's one of the things God spoke to me about, and I stopped doing. And I had some prophecy over me at Christian Retreat. And the very, one of the very first things they said was, now you're a man of your word. Now you're a man of the word. Now what you say, you're going to do. You know, and I was thrilled by that because I tried that. You know, I tried to work at that to make sure I wouldn't say things I didn't do. If I tell you I'm going to do it, almost guarantee you I'm going to do it. Okay? Because I know the results of not doing it. All right. Heavenly Father, make me a faithful person, loyal to God. Make me very faithful and loyal to God. That faithfulness is a big thing. It's a big thing. It's going to affect your growth, affect your spiritual walk. You want to be faithful here at church. Pastor Ruth and Stan asked me to. They asked me to teach tonight. I'm not scheduled to teach tonight. I got other things going on, but I want to be faithful to this ministry. And so I'll come. I'll come. It doesn't take that long. I can. I can. I can postpone it for what I'm doing. You know, faithfulness is real important. Oh God, let me not break God's law so that I may be loved by you. Make me very faithful and loyal, especially as far as the Ten Commandments are concerned. Praise God. Anybody can repeat the Ten Commandments? All right. How many of you know the Ten Commandments? Any volunteer here to do the Ten Commandments? All right, if you turn over one sheet. When I started to use this, I said to myself, I don't know the Ten Commandments. And so at the bottom of this sheet, I got the Ten Commandments. And so every now and then I say to myself, as far as the Ten Commandments are concerned, I said, oh, maybe I should review them. You know, and so then I review them. Okay? Turn back here. Father, make me holy and sanctify. Father, sanctify me. Father, sanctify me in your power. And then it says the Lord's Prayer here. Then I say the Lord's Prayer. Real simple to do. Uh, we need set apart for holiness. Here's what Jesus said about holiness. He said, I set myself apart. It's in John. I set myself apart. Example, I'm not around the things that can cause me to sin. I set myself apart. Okay, because I don't want to be around sin. Okay, that's hard to do when you're out in the working world a lot of times. But you can do it. You can set yourself apart. Uh, bad language, poor attitudes, all those things. You know, I worked all my life. And so, once I became a Christian, I stay away from that. Guys that talk about the girls, guys talk about this and that. You know, I don't have to be around them. I might have to work with them. Yeah. But I can keep quiet, and then when we're done, I can leave. Yeah. You know, so that setting yourself apart, that's, that's really big. That will really help you to do that. All right. Father, give me grace to forgive and love. Father, if you give me more, any more strength, then I will love them. Father, make me a very humble and meek person. Oh God, let me be very soft and loving in my heart to my Christians. All right, I always get discussion on this, and, and some of the guys aren't happy with this. Um, and so here we go. The, give me grace to forgive and love. If any more strength, then I will love them. I'll tell you the story. Pastor Cho had a woman come up to him for prayer. 
Now here's a guy, largest church in the world. When he prays for people, things happen. And so he prayed for her. Nothing happened. And so she kept coming up. Nothing happened. You know, she'd come up every Sunday. Nothing happened. And so finally he started to realize what was going on here, and he said, he started to pray about it. Why isn't this woman getting healed? And God spoke to him and said, because she has unforgiveness in her heart. Mm. Okay? Unforgiveness will do it. And so he went back. Next time she came up, he said, God's not going to heal you. You have unforgiveness in your heart. Okay? And she said, I can never forgive my in-laws. No. She said, I can never love my in-laws. And Pastor Joe went back and in prayer time and told God that. He said, you can't love her in-laws. He, he had all the things he did, she did, they did to her and everything else. And the Lord spoke to him. I'm telling this is Pastor Joe. He said, look, I'm not asking you to love them. I'm just asking you to forgive them. Okay? And so he went back and told her that. He said, you need to forgive. You're not going to be required to love them. You need to forgive them. And she said, I forgive them. And as soon as she did that, she had some face problems here, stigmatism or something. And it all went. Now, here's the deal. Guys argue with all the time when I teach this. And they say, well, you're, you're to love everybody. You love your neighbors, love yourself. Okay, I understand that. But sometimes, example is when they slaughter your family before your eyes. It's difficult to love them, you know? You're difficult to love and be required to love when things happen sometimes. You can't forgive. A Corey Tim Boom, pastor mentioned her the other day. Uh, she was speaking, and one of the guys stood up and said, I was a guard at your concentration camp. And you know what she said to him right away? I forgive, I forgive you. But she didn't say, let's go out to dinner. We'll talk about it. She said, I forgive you, and that's it. You know, so loving's another step. It's another step that's uh, somewhat very difficult. You guys, if you've been hurt, you understand that a little bit, you know? All right. Questions on that? Golden candlesticks. There are seven aspects of the Holy Spirit. It's in Isaiah 11, 1 to 2. Um, golden candlesticks. Spirit of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, counseling, might, knowledge. knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Those are the seven aspects of the Holy Spirit. Let's read through this. Dear Holy Spirit, I recognize you. I welcome you. I adore you. Thank you for being in my life. You are my senior partner. You are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You are the Spirit of wisdom. You are the Spirit of understanding. You are the Spirit of counseling. You are the Spirit of power. You are the Spirit of the revelation of the Word of God. You are the Spirit of reverence, which gives me the power to reveal God. So help me now. I can't do anything without your anointing. I depend upon you. I worship you. I thank you. I love you. I admire you. I depend upon you. I can't handle these situations. You are the one that has all the power. Let's go together. Let's go, dear Holy Spirit. Did you ever read that about the Holy Spirit before? It says, I recognize you. I worship you. Ever hear anybody say that? Very interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. And then at the bottom, you are the one that has all the power. Well, amen. He is the guy. He is the guy. And if he doesn't go, nothing happens. You know, you're worthless without him. You're just worthless without him. <coughs> Questions on the golden candlesticks? Talking about the table of showbread, getting a daily rhema. Rhema is the word of God. It's a revelation. Rhema from God. A revelation from God. That means revelation. It, it, I have to look it up. It's the word of God. They use the rhema as the word of God, but I'm assuming it's, uh, it's it might be some revelation of the word. Maybe they could just say getting a daily word from God. Yeah. Get a daily word from God. Here's what they did with the showbread. It was a table, and God told them to put... Bread is the word of God. It is the word of God. And so every day they'd, put, they'd bake bread, and they'd put it right in the temple. You know, they put three loaves, or five, seven loaves, I think. And they'd put it in the temple. And so the word of God is crucial. The word of God will teach you, it will direct you. It's just crucial. If you're not reading your Bible, you're not going to go anywhere. You gotta gotta force that reading. Son, you gotta force it sometimes. I'm gonna read so many. That's it. That's it. And uh, it's crucial. It's crucial. All right. Lord, I envy the Word of God. I admire and love the Word of God. I long after. Oh, there's a word. I long after the Word of God. I read. I study. I believe. I act. I thank you. Doesn't that say it all? I read it. I study it. I believe it. And I act, act on it, and then I thank you for it. 
Oh my, that's just, just think of your God and listen to that. And they're saying it to you. It's just unbelievable. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, teach, and I want to teach this Word of God. You're all here qualified to teach. You study this program, you're all ready to go. You know, you're ready to go. Maybe you need more in-depth teaching. Okay, maybe metered, but there's guys I know that never went to Bible school. I didn't go to Bible school. There's a thousand guys out there, just fantastic Bible teachers. Just fantastic Bible teachers. And uh, there we go. So, Lord, give me a fresh revelation in my heart. When I pray and read my Bible, before I pray, before I read my Bible, ask for revelation. I want to know something different that I don't know. Okay, and sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't, but I ask for it every time I read it. Start out right away, ask it. Start out right away. All right. My heart is pounding for the Word of God. Give me a new revelation. Praise God. Altar of incense. Altar of incense, they poured incense onto the altar and it burned it up in, in the temple, went up in smoke. And here's what it says. I really appreciate you. You delivered me from sin. You delivered me from worldliness. You delivered me from sickness. You delivered me from the curse. You delivered me from death. You are the God who is the foundation of my life. You are the purpose of my life. You are the value of my life. I worship you, the God who created the heavens and earth and all things in them. I worship you. I thank you. That God who created the heavens and earth and all things in it. If you read through your Bibles and guys are praying in there, they say that all the time. They say that all the time. It's mentioned over and over and over again in praise of God. So obviously he likes it or he wouldn't have be in there because he wrote it. And so I, I like that section there. I like that section there. Questions on the altar of incense. Pastor Cho, do, I don't do it the way Pastor Cho does it. When Pastor Cho gets to this part, he just praises God for 20 minutes. Praises God for 20 minutes. I don't do that. I do that earlier. I do that earlier. Ark of the Covenant. Do you know what the Ark of the Covenant is? You've studied the Ark of the Covenant now? It's a uh, piece of furniture in the temple. The temple is divided into the courtyard. What's in the courtyard? The altar where they slaughter the animals. The water where they wash. Okay. Then you go into the building itself. And there's a curtain right in the middle of the building. All right. And it's a holy place and the holy is a holy. The holy place, the priests go in and work. They do the altar of incense. They put the bread down. They do, uh, what else we got here? Bread, all of incense, something else here. Three pieces. The golden candlesticks. Okay, they work with those three things. Right? And uh, so that's that. This behind the curtains, the holy of holies. The Ark of the Covenant is in there. The Ark of the Covenant is where God would meet his people right on that piece of furniture. There was, there was cherubims in there that had their wings out and God would meet them in between there. And the priest would go in once a year with blood. He put blood for himself and blood for the people. And that's cleansed the people of their sins, cleansed Israel. They did it once a year. Uh, it was a heavy curtain and the way they did it is they lifted it up from the bottom and he crawled under. It was seamless. And he crawled under to work at the Holies of Holy. Right? And they would put bells on his feet. Mm -hmm. And so if he had sin in him, sin in, if it's sin on top of it, it wasn't confessed out, God would strike him. He'd die. They wouldn't hear the bells. And so when you didn't hear the bells, uh, it ain't good. So they would lift the curtain up and they'd drag him out. And that's the way that worked. But you know, Christ died. That curtain's open now. We can go right into the Holy of Holies. We can go right to God now. We don't need the priest. We don't need, the t we don't need really the temple. Okay, we don't need that. We have wonderful access to Him. All right. Questions on any of that so far? All right. The Ark of the Covenant. I am eternally forgiven. I'm eternally declared righteous. I'm eternally saved. I'm eternally blessed by His blood covenant. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I am now your family member with my father, and I am your child, and I joy in the triune God. I'm living in the holies of holy. Father, now I have many requests. I want you to hear them and help me. Praise God. And then I go right on to my prayer list. I have several prayer lists, and I go right on to them. But I always do this first. Get myself ready. Get God ready to hear me. Okay. On the top of my prayer list, I always come into his presence with singing. So I've done the praise. I've done all my knees. Then I've done the praise. Now I do my uh, temple prayer. Okay. Then I start my prayer list, and that always starts out with a song. 
come before his presence with singing. You know, I say this little song I sing. Okay, and then I get down through my listing of people. And so I'm ready then. God's ready to hear me. I've done the adoration thing with him. He's ready. I'm ready. And then we do it. We do it. Questions on any of this? This is a wonderful tool. I use this every day. I've used it for years. And so I really like it. I punch it for you. If you have a notebook, you can put it in. Uh, it's a, it will help you in your life. Help you in your prayer life. And help you spiritually. Questions? Okay, hello, my name is Homer Knox, and I have the distinct privilege of asking you today, are you a Christian? Are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If not, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, and he rose from the dead on the third day after burial. He's seated now at the right hand of the Father. And so there's salvation in no one else. So if this has stirred your heart and you'd like to receive Christ, we're going to do that right now. Please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me with your blood. I want to thank you for giving me this salvation. Thank you for making me a new person. And thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed that, you just... You just got saved, you're born again, you're a Christian, welcome to the family. There's another teaching on this website entitled, Just Saved, Now What? And that might help you on your walk. God bless you.